So nearby Lulu, do you like the present my mum got me? Kind of hate it. You can't beat drum jokes. Hey, I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this bastard. Oh, you're gonna hate this first line. Oh no. Elvis Presley was once quoted as saying, there are two kinds of folks who know karate, the Chinese and the king. No. <laughs> God. Ignoring the fact that karate is Japanese, and uh, I'm guessing you know what it means. Karate, empty hand, yeah. yeah. That's what, and karaoke, what does that mean? Karaoke, empty orchestra. That's the one, that's the trivia everybody knows about karaoke. So whilst Elvis Presley was wildly misinformed about the origins of karate, he was a noted master of the art. So much so that he was able to punch a gun out of somebody's hand who was moments away from shooting him. So was it like a stick up or what happened? Well, we can get to that in a moment, but first, people out there are probably wondering, wait, Elvis knew karate? Because there are two views in their minds people have of Elvis Presley the King. It's either the, the view that I prefer, which is young, fit, handsome, sexy Elvis, <laughs> or fat old man Elvis. Excuse me, Dilf Elvis, thank you very much. Do you like the fat Elvis? No, I just, I feel like it's disrespectful. <laughs> but the thing is though, he was pretty fat though, wasn't it? Uh, we've done a couple of videos on Elvis and about his um, eating habits, because they're just so insane that we've had to make multiple videos about him. For example, he once traveled across the country um, when he was having a drink with a friend and they happened to mention something called the Fool's Gold Loaf, which is an entire loaf of bread with a pound of bacon, a uh, jar of peanut butter and a jar of grape jelly in it, fried. And Elvis heard about this and went, I need to try this fucking sandwich. And he chartered his private jet and flew across the country and ordered a dozen of these sandwiches, ate them in the airport, and then flew home. You know, I wouldn't, like, I would probably be so much more disgusted by that if not for the fact that Elvis was, like, equally generous as he was yes. indulgent for himself. Like, yeah. Indulgent in all areas, in his generosity and for himself. Yes, yeah, so we've also told another story about Elvis where he walked into the White House and gave Richard Nixon a gun. And the reason that, like, we've talked about that in another video, so you can go look back if you're interested about the story, but the reason Elvis was in Washington, D.C. and was able to go meet uh, Richard Nixon is because uh, him and his wife had had an argument because he'd given away too many Cadillacs as Christmas presents that year. Because something Elvis would do is he'd walk around and virtually everyone he met would get a Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was like the one-man Cadillac dealership. Like, if you knew Elvis in any tangential way, he would give you a Cadillac. Bring it back to Elvis the martial artist, though. The best example, oddly enough, of how much he loved karate is Fat Elvis, like when he was like, you know, at the end of his life. And those infamously bad photos and we like the flop sweat on stage in Vegas. Do you know that white jumpsuit? Yeah. That was directly inspired by his own karate gi. Oh my gosh. That's what it is, it's a karate gi that he wore on stage. And it goes full circle because Elvis' own custom-made karate gi also looked like his jumpsuit he wore on stage. When you see someone rock up to like a martial arts tournament and they're wearing a custom gi. It's like in The Karate Kid, when like Daniel LaRusso turns up and he turns it around and it's got like Miyagi-Do karate on it and the little bonsai to it. It's like, that kid's gonna win. When you're getting like, when you're putting that much evidence to the monogram on the back of your outfit, you're gonna whoop some ass. And I always got confused about that movie though, because I always thought karate gis, they're historically white, yes? Yes. Like, Cobra Kai wear black ones, and I never knew that was an option. Oh, yeah, um, the, like, every small Asian kid, I did do martial arts at mm -hmm. some point in my childhood. And actually, to when you got towards the end, like, around, like, brown belt or so, you were allowed to have a black gi. Oh man, they look so much cooler. And it, the only reason they look cool is because it's the one that's rarer. And it reminds me a little bit of a friend of mine who was a chef. And chefs wear chef whites, which as the name suggests, are white. But when he was ordering his chef whites, he noticed that you could order them in any color you wanted. So he just got bright pink chef whites <laughs> and got yelled at every day by the boss. It's like, you can't wear, it's like, why I'm wearing exactly what's required. You never told me they had to be white. You just had to buy chef whites. <laughs> And these chef whites just have to be bright fucking pink. <laughs> anyway, Elvis, um, uh, for anyone wondering, was a seventh dan black belt in karate. Oh, wow. Um, which is, I think that's about as high as it goes, isn't it? Uh, highest is 10th degree, but that, yeah, you would get grandmaster at that title. Oh, that grandmaster of karate. Does that mean you'd be a grandmaster and a king? Well, now I think I briefly mentioned that Elvis gave Nixon a gun, and after he did that, he became a special agent at large, mm -hmm. uh, which wasn't an official title, but that's what Elvis called himself, because he got given a special badge that let him do whatever he wanted. So you'd be a special agent at large, grandmaster king. <laughs> that's a fucking title right there, but... Elvis's rank is actually something of a source of controversy because he attained a seventh Dan black belt in about three years, which is about half the time it takes someone who's training every day to get. 
So uh, his actual skill was probably not that of someone who was a seventh dan black belt who trained their entire life. But nonetheless, Elvis was very, very good at karate and had been trained in it near enough his entire adult life, uh, first encountering it in the army. And he went in the army, he was like 18, 20 years old. So basically, that's 30, 40 years worth of karate experience mm -hmm. right there. So it's, like, it's not like he wasn't good at karate, but you can see there that the guy who gave him the belt's like, oh, it's a good thing for me to be the guy who gave Elvis his black belt. <laughs> And you might be thinking, folks, like, well, was Elvis any good at karate? And the thing is, he really was. And he loved it so much, he would always love to demonstrate his karate moves to other people. And sometimes um, would just drive around looking for an excuse to use his karate to solve crimes. <laughs> and this is a real thing that Elvis did because Elvis loved um, a couple of things. One was bacon, two was music, and the third was guns and the police. And every time Elvis went and performed in a new city or a state, he would always request a meeting with the chief of police. And he'd ask them if they could make him an honorary deputy. And most chief of police, why, why would we not want to have Elvis in an honorary sense, like, you know, part of our police force? The thing is though, Elvis didn't think it was honorary. When he got given that badge, he's like, well, I'm a police officer now, I can stop crimes. And Elvis would drive around in one of his custom-made Cadillacs uh, looking for crimes to stop. And he would pull over people for speeding and then tell them off. Show them his badge and say, don't do that again. The king is very disappointed and drive off. That's amazing. That is so Can you imagine getting pulled over by fucking Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> and when cops would pull him over, he'd flash, he'd say, don't worry, I'm a cop too. And they'd see the badge and they'd look at their badge and go, I don't remember, but I guess he is a cop. <laughs> and there is a story of um, a guy who was getting the shit kicked out of him at a gas station or something like that by two men. And then he heard a car, just the brakes of a car just slamming on. And then just a voice from the distance. What are you doing? I'll take you two on. Stop that. Turn around, Elvis Presley in full karate gi, like that, ready to whoop <laughs> some ass. It's coming in. God, I just love how, like, the more and more we end up talking about Elvis, the more just absolutely absurd he seems. Like his life was insane. But as you mentioned, he was very generous. And I don't think I've ever encountered anyone in all my research ever had a bad word to say about him. Everyone who met him says he's wonderful. He's so nice. So I don't know how true it is because we all know how much old men like to say things. Mm -hmm. But I once met this old man on a cruise and he claimed that uh, he was from the same hometown as Elvis. And when Elvis had hit it big, like he was still a teenager, I believe, at the time. And he went and he rented out the biggest, the, the movie theater in that town the entire thing and all the high schoolers in that area were allowed to go. So like he partied with Elvis multiple times just because he kept throwing parties for the entire teenage population of that town. Yeah, which sounds about right given that we know when Elvis was like, you know, later in his career, would just give people Cadillacs and guns all the time. He loved to give people guns. He just gave people <laughs> guns and Cadillacs all of the time, which leads us to how he once punched a gun out of somebody's hand. Okay, so what happened? <laughs> Here's where the story just gets ridiculous. As you mentioned, Elvis's life is just insane. The person who he punched the gun out of the hand of was Alice Cooper. You know, shock oh. rock legend, Alice Cooper. Oh my God. Oh, that's so weird. Like you don't think of them as being from the same era, but yeah, I guess they were alive at the same time. Yeah, and they met each other multiple times. And according to Alice Cooper, on one of the first opportunities he had to meet Elvis, he was invited into his hotel room, which he immediately noticed was filled to the brim with drugs and guns. <laughs> That's just how Elvis liked to roll. And he walked in and he asked Elvis, why do you need so many guns? And Elvis explained that he liked guns. And then he walked around the house and he showed him his large collection of guns. And then just Alice Cooper trying to make conversation, asked him, so I've heard you're pretty good at karate. He said, oh yeah, I'm great at karate. He goes, well, what use is karate against, for example, a gun? And then Elvis, in response to that, opened a kitchen drawer, which of course had a gun in it, showed Alice Cooper that it was loaded, handed it to Alice Cooper, and asked him to point it at his own head. And here's the thing, so according to Alice Cooper in that moment, like, he didn't know what was happening, because he was expecting for one of Elvis' security guards to walk into the room and shoot him dead. But when he was having that thought, he also thought, hang on a second, if I shoot Elvis, I'm a legend. <laughs> Because he's like, do you have those voices in here? Do you like, I think it's Call of the Void, they call it, when you have those thoughts that are like really, really dangerous. And then like you just have the sudden urge to like jump off a bridge or open a car door while it's moving. Uh -huh. He had a moment like that, it was like, and that voice in his head's like, do it, shoot him. You'll, you'll always be the guy who shot Elvis. You'll live forever as this legend who did it. And then he thought, well, maybe if I just wound him, I'll get a couple years in prison, but I'll still be the guy who shot Elvis. <laughs> 
<laughs> and before he could finish that thought, Elvis did a jumping spin kick, knocked the gun out of his hand, got him in a chokehold, threw him to the ground, said, that's how you disarm a guy with a gun. <laughs> and then presumably went, did a bunch of drugs and ate some bacon. <laughs> what a man. 